What's up, guys? Welcome to yet another episode of Talk at Moments. Today, I have with me in the studio, uh, she is a foremost broadcaster, one of the voices that actually shaped new media, uh, new radio, if you let oh, me wow. say so. Um, my colleague in the business, before, before colleague, but yes. still on the path, Tools Onu Demurin. Did I do it the right way? Tools yes, Demurin, yes, yes, Onu, yes, yes, yes. You did it the right way. Hey, <laughs> welcome, Nana. Welcome. All right, so you? first off, I need to apologize. I was late. Yes, you and I feel were. really bad. Yes, you, you know, were. and and took it's giving me that evil eye. Yeah. <laughs> Look, so I'm I apologize. I'm mm. sorry. Okay. But good and to then see she you. made me do a shot. So Oh yeah, and they didn't catch that on camera. It was so but like tools took down the azul like a champ. I was looking at you and thinking, girl, what's going on in your life? And I haven't eaten today. <laughs> so whatever comes out, comes out. I'm sorry. I'm You're sorry. You downed it. Like, I'm like, girl, what's going oh, on? Oh, gosh. No, no, I just, I just, and I also felt guilty for being late. So I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Good to see I'm you. I'm good. You've also, you know, passed on the radio torch. You've left the radio business. Yeah. Do you know, it's been like, this year makes it 13 years. Mine was 13 years. Yeah. So it was, uh, um, I think it was, I haven't, this is actually the first time that um, I'm, you know, speaking about, about it. it. And yeah. it was, it was a very difficult decision. Mm. But then I kind of, um, and it wasn't because I was um, unhappy there. Mm. Um, I, I just felt that I just, there were so many different things that I needed to do. Mm. Um, so I, I will always consider them family. I mean, yeah. I, I'd always told, um, our um the the MD, mm-hmm. Mr. Chris, that if I left, you know, be I don't think I would go to another station. It would yeah. that would probably yeah. be that's you know. what I actually it's yeah. so weird. That's exactly what I said to the bruises. I knew yeah. that once I leave, I was taking the dip, you yeah. know, for good. It wasn't to go not it wasn't, like leave no, other stations try to poach us here and there. But I was just like, nah, this I, is not it. I did actually have I did have like um two stations that tried to poach me. Okay. And I was actually like, look, I don't know what you can offer me mm-hmm. that's I'm not getting at mm-hmm. beat. You know, mm. so um, it was. It's it's been a fantastic journey. Um, I'm not. I'm not the kind of person that would just kind of be like, oh, I did it all myself. I don't <laughs> think there would be a tools without Beat FM. Yeah. So they gave me a fantastic platform, and I'll always be grateful. Yeah. You know the reason why I'm talking to you because this is usually not like an interview. This is yeah. just you know you know people just chatting mm-hmm. and letting off some steam. But the reason why I started to talk to you about that is because I don't think I've ever said this to you, but um, you were also very instrumental in me getting back into it. Oh, really? Yeah, because I mean, I'd done radio when I was 19, mm. and then my mom heard me on the radio, and then back then it wasn't a, a career, it wasn't a job. It was almost like you have to be a doctor or a lawyer or yeah. this, and if you don't do that, you know, when people come to the house, they say, we have an accountant, we have this, and they look at you and think, what is that thing that you're doing, you know? So I went to school, got a degree, tried to move to London, tried to hack the entertainment industry, didn't work out, and I'd come back, and working in the bank, and I was on my way to work, and I turned on the radio, and no, you were not on the early morning show. So it's either when I was on, a way, on my way to a meeting, mm. I turned on the radio and there you were. And I was like, ooh, okay. And the constant reminder that if God gives you a gift and you yeah. don't use it, he would definitely find other people yeah. to give that same gift and they will. So you kind of whipped me in the back to say, okay, you know what? This is one of the things that you're passionate about. Oh. Go for it. And then I did. Well done. Well yeah. done. Well done. I always say that um, I'm, I'm a strong believer that... Um, I'm a strong believer in getting messages yeah. from um, different places, the like the universe, the birds, yes, the breeze, yes, yes. <laughs> anything so, talking to me right now. <laughs> most of the most of like the big decisions I've made, mm. I always have this little voice, and I call it the voice of God. Like mm. when um, moving to Nigeria was never ever part of my plans. It mm. wasn't something that I was like, okay, at this point I'll move. Um, but I remember I hadn't, and when I tell people this story, they're always like, oh, this is crazy. So. Mm. Um, 2008, I came f- I came to Nigeria for my cousin's wedding. Mm. And before that, I hadn't stepped foot in Nigeria for about 10 years. Like, really? I hadn't even stepped foot. So I came, I came, because, and I was, I lived here for um, a few years. Yeah. I think from, like, 1990 for a few years. Mm. Um, and I actually went to school. I finished my primary school. Yeah. Um, and started secondary school. What primary school did you um, go? I went to Adrao, Adrao okay. International in VI. Okay. Um, and so, like, back then, Lagos was different. Mm. It was a very, very different vibe. Mm. 
And I was, I always just kind of felt like that's what Lagos was. Yeah. So when I came in, um, 2008 it was, and I just saw that everything had changed. <laughs> and so my thing was, I came in December of 2008. Mm-hmm. And, and you I thought came, that's what Lagos is do like? Do you understand? Mm-hmm. So I, I experienced the dirty December mm-hmm. and I was like, oh my gosh, Lagos is just crazy. Yeah. And um, at that point, I'd, um, I'd, I was working at MTV. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd left MTV mm-hmm. and the entertainment industry in London was, mm. I'm, in my opinion, like quite oversaturated. Mm. Like every, it felt like mm. everybody was there. Mm. So I was look, really looking for a new challenge, and I'd been, you know, looking at different, um, different job opportunities. I think I'd been offered a job somewhere, and I came back to London, and I was like, okay, let me just go back to my job, and then. I just was like, I feel like I'm missing out so yeah. much. Yeah. And the voice was just like, why don't you just try out Lagos for six months? Jeez. And I was like, okay, I've never... <laughs> like, let me tell you how bad it was. Mm. I was so out of touch. I was mm. like, should I pack, like, any fitted things? Because, you know, it's... You know, I literally yeah. didn't even know what to pack. Yeah. Um, and then six months became... Gosh, it's You're been here. like 12 never years, right? 12, 13 years. And then now there's, yeah. you know, a successful career, marriage, kids. Yeah, my baby. Oh, that's yeah. so cute. I mean, apart from the fact that you literally, you know, are one of those people that a lot of young people would listen to on the radio and think, I can do this. You know, you've also sort of balanced family life. Trying and talking to. about family... <laughs> um, this is one of the topics that I know that you usually do on yeah. your handover show. Uh, lately in the news, it's been crazy. Everyone's talking about it. I think that Jesus needs to come back versus that with... So many different things happening Because in this world. the world is going crazy, mm-hmm. isn't it? Like, let's start with Adam Levine. I don't even know <coughs> where to begin with this, this so, guy. First, my idea of Maroon 5. I just idolized this guy so much. Not because I knew him personally, but more, I'm, come on now. We all knew how we grew up on mm. Maroon 5. Yeah. And yeah. Adam Levine was just that guy. Just looked really like cool. And of late, we had this Instagram model who comes out to let us know that um, he's a cheater. So. <laughs> should I say what I really think? I think you should. The only thing that surprises me about this whole situation is how Adam Levine has no game. The DMs were just so like a 17 year old trying to pick somebody like, you know, oh, wow, you like this, too. I like this music, too. And I'm just like, Adam Levine, you're a rock star. You You have like, no, I I don't know, like the perfect way, the perfect word Mm -hmm. to use. Yeah. But I mean, right now, it's swag. Like, we shouldn't have that much access to you. Like, the way you're chatting is like a normal person. He just didn't have any game. Yeah. So it's it's one thing, um, one thing that I like, I like, should I say like? Mm. One thing that mm. stood out for me um, in, in this situation is the fact that people weren't dragging his wife mm. because quite Ooh. often you have a famous guy mm-hmm. that, you know, um, steps out on his wife mm. and you have everyone kind of trying to figure out what she was lacking. Yeah. She like wasn't even in the him... picture in most of the stories. Yeah, like so, just... so, but, but, you know, back in the day, yeah. back in the day, I mean, yeah. even, you know, can I, yeah, can I, yeah, yeah. With, with you, it, it, you know, with me. <laughs> people, you're like, people were kind of just, you know, maybe she yeah. was, she was too out there. She yeah. wasn't, she wasn't at home cooking. She wasn't, yeah. you know, uh, he, she, maybe she, if she was just a little bit more humble, humble. and everything. So yeah. I like the fact that people kind of left her mm. alone mm. because she wasn't in the DMs. But, but, but let me just correct you right there. I think that it's also the climate, it's where they are situated, geography. If this was Nigeria, best believe they would drag the wife. Best yeah. believe they would fight. Let's not even go there. If it was this climate, you and I know that it would be about, ah, Especially if she's someone who is also has a career, yeah. she's out there. They she's not find humble. find a way to say <laughs> when she's out there trying to work so hard. Or maybe no. look at the man, look at who the man cheated with. You can see, the, you know. And So I feel like this was also, I agree with you in the sense that this was also one place where it backfired. Yeah. Because I've always, for the thousandth time, I've tried to understand what was going through the girl's mind when she came out. Why did she do what she did? Why did she feel the need to speak on it? Wait, wasn't there a girl like a few weeks ago that came out because um, she allegedly was with Burner Boy? Why do you do that? You you do that for attention, whether it's negative or positive. There's some people Burner that Boy just thrive. That, no, you know? but there, there, there are people that will, like there's certain people, certain, um, I don't want to just say, you know, girls. Yeah, I yeah, don't, yeah. yeah. But the fact, them hooking up with, you know, the somebody famous that's person. famous, somebody that's mm. well known, in their mind, they're like, okay, what can this do for me? What can this, and from the moment the conversation starts, mm. they already know what they're doing. I, I hear you on one hand, and I'm not one that even cares so much about what happens behind closed doors, because to be honest, we all know that 
Instagram is full of, you know, controlled content. Whatever we all choose yeah. to put out, we choose to put out, and there's a real world. And marriage, as you said, is tough. And I respect, I like the institution of marriage. I respect the institution mm. of marriage. That it didn't work out for me one time does not mean that yeah. I did not enjoy being married. Mm. But that being said, what I am tired of is women who almost end up feeling like it's 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 a silent code where we already bear something called shame mm. that has nothing to do with us. Yeah. Do you understand? So if my husband should cheat, what's my business with media rounds? Or when he, he will lo, lo, she, mm. it, Is she doing media rounds? No, I mean like if they're doing, doing okay. no, when you say they're putting up a safe face. So yeah. I, I thought she hadn't said anything and I was actually happy at the fact that she, I don't think she said anything. has just been away from the whole thing because that's what I yeah. would do. Um, now you go carry your shame. You go carry a hot camp for streets. But do you know? And I will still hang out with my girlfriends for brunch on Sunday and be like, guys. But what's do you know? Going do on? you know the agreement that they that they have? Maybe the agreement was that you know what? How long have they been married now? For a I few don't years. Even know. Maybe the agreement. And we was, didn't even know anything about his marriage. First yeah. Start with it. I just used to see beautiful pictures. She's yeah. a Victoria's Secret model. Yeah. She was. They did. Stunning... They did that whole video together where they where they had all yeah. the different isn't so it? I used um, to... girls like mm, mm. yeah that mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you never know. Maybe it's an agreement of you know what. If there's any infidelity, for how many years we've been married, you pay me $3 million or something. Mm. So maybe she's like, Aha! On that note, I'll support her you know. sis, but that means, so I mean, so if I, I will wear the best Gucci, the best boss, the best so you Lisa Follow yeah. to all the press conference mm. we're doing, and make sure that I look hella good, if that's what it is. Mm. But I, even if we bring it down here, you and I know that there are many people who automatically become a shadow of themselves because this has happened to them. And, you know, there's always that thing where they think that, even in the supermarket, as you said, people are staring at them and you're going through some what's my own? Do you remember Remember how when my own happened, we still went to what's that place in VI, that restaurant. Do you remember to have drinks? Because I just refused to identify with yeah. a man's shame. If mm. it, and I'm, if I marry again, <sighs> yeah, and my husband decides to behave that way again, trust me, I will still wear this abaya you're wearing. I will still come on your next channel. I'll just be talking. Okay, what's going on? <laughs> because I feel like it's high time we women begin to shame the culture of shame. I personally feel like our mothers did not do us any justice. I say this to my mom all the time. Mm. I feel like there's so many things they did not share with us very quickly. And there were so many things that they endured in the name of long suffering or in yes. the name of, oh, I'm only doing this because of the children. Yeah. And I, not to sound like I'm, I'm being very harsh. I know a lot of them probably did not work back, back then and the man was bringing them the cheddar and they felt like, but you know what? Even back then, as they were not working, they were very industrious. Mm. Many of them were just not bold <clears throat> enough to be able to, you know, family pressure. I don't want them to think I'm the one feeding my husband. I would find time for myself after I found time for everything yeah. else. And there was no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that was given to them. Now, they didn't tell us. Mm. You know what I mean? But I'm proud of the women in this maybe generation. They maybe they didn't know any better. If if I if I think when I think about it, it's there, there's so many different things that you can you know talk about. There's you know the um, the whole you know gender roles, all of this. Um, I think it's it starts with how um, male children are raised in in the household all around the world. Definitely. Actually, but ge- ma- mainly in Africa. Let's mm-hmm. just you know if we're gonna talk about it, it's, it's really mainly in Africa and how like a lot of you know sons. It was like oh yeah, go and play, but oh our daughter, you need to be in the kitchen with mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm really and, and I see that that has definitely had like a, a massive impact. I, I, there's so many people that I know. There's so many guys that I know that they grow up in the abroad. They they move back. Mm. They still have that, that whole yeah. mental that yeah. whole like ideology yeah. that no, I'm not supposed to do this and do yeah. that. So what I'm trying to do is I'm tr- doing my bit yeah. to change the narrative. Yeah. So with my boys, they they because uh, our kitchen is actually where we you know tend to hang out the most because mm-hmm. it's like you know quite big. There's TV there and everything. So quite often, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that they've I've ha- I have videos of my sons actually cleaning, like cleaning tables and everything. And it's because it's not like we kind of say, oh no, you're you're, you're a boy, you're not supposed, you're not to, do supposed to do that. I'm like, yeah. no. When it when it, the time comes as well, they're going to be you know helping me with the cooking and everything because that needs to change because mm. right from it from a very very young age, you're telling them that they're worth the difference. Mm. That you know this is what you're supposed to be doing. This is what you're supposed to be doing. And mm. I feel that for daughters, you're held up to like there's the so many different. So it, it doesn't different. make any sense. Do you yeah. know like God rest his soul? But my dad would be like, oh, is this what you're going to do in your husband's house? 
house. And, and I'm just like, that is my life. house yeah. too. It's my house too. What do you mean my husband's house? Yeah. You know, it's my house too. So I think that needs to change. Mm. Um, back to what I said about, you know, um, I think being married in Nigeria, be, being married in Africa is actually really, it's a different ballgame because there's so much pressure on the woman to like do so much you've got to be the perfect wife you've got to be the perfect mother because you're blamed if everything if yes. the ball drops anyway if yes. your kids are badly behaved she's a bad wife yeah. and a bad mother if your husband is not looking like you know chubby is looking too skinny the family said put on to you first and ask people okay for quite long journey you know if, if if there's infidelity in the family it's, this is yeah. you maybe you let yourself go see maybe you there's this. you could have a, a woman that's married like in the bedroom, she's a firecracker. She can spin, do backflips, do everything. She's like a freaking Michelin chef in the kitchen. <laughs> she can make everything. She looks good. She's had like four kids. She looks amazing. Mm. You know, she looks in. And if a guy's still going to step out, he's going to step but out. Why do you think men cheat though? If, if they um, have all the things that you've mentioned, why why would a man have a Michelin star wife? I don't in the think kitchen? now that's the th I don't think it actually most times I don't think it has anything to do with the woman. Mm. I think because that's the narrative we need to change because quite often, you know, something happens and then, you know, it's like, but what are you lacking? Like mm -hmm. look, look at Nia Long now. Everyone's mm -hmm. like, you cheated on Nia Long. And I'm like, I don't think it's anything to do with, you know, what Nia Long Nia has or what she doesn't either. have. I think this is somebody that, you know, I don't know how the relationship started with, with the other lady, mm. but he, that's something that he did. I don't think that she was, you know, like some guys tried to do this. Oh, she's such a bitch to me. So I, you know, did this. No, I think if you're, well, you're there gonna are some do, men who are that also very petty. I think, I think it's, I think it's bullshit. Hmm. You have guys, you have, there's some guys that they have been, you know, in a marriage with, let's just say their wife has been sick for like years and years and years. She is, you know, she can't really do like all these different things that people like think are, you know, wife duties and everything. And they're faithful. Mm. They have like, if you think so do you about think it. That there's anything like a faithful guy? Huh? I, hmm. I'm just asking because, you know. Do you know what? Like seem, I, I, no, nowadays, nowadays, I think, you know, a faithful person, period. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I think what's happened is there's like, there's this whole, like, really, really horrible, vicious cycle that's going on. Yeah. Like, I've, I'm hearing that women in this Lagos Girl, are doing that's like some another madness. Topic for another day. So, Girl. And you then, know. you know, the thing is, like, before, I used to be, like, clutching my pearls. She did that. Oh, she's doing that. But these days, I'm like, ah, sure, I don't get caught. Mm. Nothing surprises me anymore. Mm. I'm just like, oh, really? She because did this? some of those people, what they've had to deal with, and the one that they pay me past is that man, small cheating. You now want to bring down the roof. <laughs> do you know all the things you've done to do to manage like this marriage? When I have like guy friends come and complain to me that maybe they're suspecting something about their wives, I'm always the first to remind them, oh boy, you don't forget. When you did this, when you did that, you don't that. forget. You don't. <laughs> if it's just small and nobody knows, you better close your mouth and face the front because let me tell you what it, I, it feels so good to say to the man that there's no wife out there. <laughs> ah, you want to leave this with all the children and start again? Do you know what it's going to start again? You're literally going to start again dating. See if you like her. Ah, bros, nobody knows this matter. Just. Oh. <laughs> just Pray. Enter prayer Enter room. Enter prayer room. Do you understand? Pray. <laughs> or you two start making time and start being there. And say, because Listen, you now look at your belly. You're not really, you, you know. You <laughs> know? Oh, I love it every time that I have to speak to a couple of my guy friends and maybe they're thinking this and that. Oh, the woman is just being funny. Oh, she's, I'm like, ah, don't shout too much. Oh, your sins, your book of sins is worse. Do you know what I mean? So just small cheating. And I don't understand the double standards. A man would do this, do this, do this. And we're at the mercy mm -hmm. of family will call you ah. To look below, forgive. Friends will call you and say, oh, sis, hey, ah, sis, don't think about it. Go, go back, don't yeah, move on. But when is the man? But your see, Lord is putting for you at the gate. Do you even see beware of dogs? Do not press this bell. Nothing, hey. nothing hey. gets to <laughs> I hope they come. I hope they don't come for me for this. Nothing gets to like a Nigerian man more than like the idea that his well, partner is stepping yeah. out on him. Yeah. And it's almost like, you know, they're stepping out. And, or, or like you said, your male friends and everything, they, they might be like, yeah, what is it? Just small cheating and everything. But No, let me tell you what, what men in Nigeria think. And correct me if I'm wrong. Men in Nigeria think that as long as he's taking care of home, he's a good dad, he's, you know, a financial, a financial supporter, um, and you're, like, not lacking anything, let the man do what he's going to do. I've heard this said by even women. I know someone who's husband was cheating and she went to report him to his mother now the mother sat in front of this lady and waited for her to finish ranting we 
ah, mommy does this, comes home at seven o'clock in the morning. When normal people, my daughter is going to school. That's when my husband is arriving from the club. This, this, this. And the man just said, hmm, hmm. Ah, hmm. So the school your child is going to, who is paying for it? She's like, he's the one. The house you are leaving, who is paying for it? He's the one. Your, your business, <laughs> who is supporting it? She's the one. And all these things you are not lacking. You better join me every weekend. Why do you think I go to weddings? Where is your daddy here? Because daddy lay. What if they have done their own? Why do you think I'm always in weddings? Better follow me if you are bored so that you don't start looking for him. Don't stress him more. He's done all he's supposed to do as a man. What did I say about women, like enabling, moms, moms enabling, raising their which sons is better? Why, yeah, that's why I yeah. also said that. I feel like our mothers also did, did us yeah. a lot of injustice. Do you yeah. know what I mean? They would rather say, if your brother's wife came to report, there would be a way that she would find a way to support her son. Mm. But yet, if it is you, she'll find a way to say, ah, don't bring shame to this family. Don't try that nonsense. Do you know what I mean? This is why I think it's so, so important to, um, like, if you getting married, I think it's fantastic. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. But I think it's also very important to remember who you are outside of the marriage. Mm. Because if you are, you know, there's so many people that um, are so, unfortunately, you know, there's still quite a few women that are, you know, um, really just so excited to be, you know, Mrs. Something, Mrs. Something. And then that becomes, you use that to well, define you yourself. You can't for them, girl. you got to let I them be Mrs. I think it's... I'm being sarcastic. Okay, girl. right. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think it's fantastic, but I don't out. think you should, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I don't think it should be like your, okay, this yeah. is now my, you know, identity. You were somebody before you got married. Mm. Just because you're married doesn't mean you need to abandon that person, you know, entirely. Yeah. So I like, I don't know, like what, what, what works for somebody might not work for somebody else. No, but you're, you're, this so, is gospel according to yeah. tools. And, and I'm going to end on that note. And I'm so happy that you left us with that germ. I'm so happy that you said, don't let go of who you are. Because I feel like the relationship with yourself is actually the most important relationship in this life. You know, when I realized that at the end of the day, when you're being lower to the ground, now only you. Mm. Do you understand? The tombstone has only your name. Yeah. It doesn't say wife of. Daughter. Mm. Some of them I garnish it with your dad, mother, daughter, and all these things. Mm. But on the tombstone, it is your own. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So just you just lit a fire by saying what you just said right now. In terms of people need to not let go of who they are. Uh, somebody told me this, that the person that it is um, like do or die with, mm -hmm. that actually isn't the, the best person to get married to. If you ask me now... I agree and I disagree mm. for different reasons. I agree in the sense that nobody should be that obsessed with anyone. If you're talking about the whole live your life and, yeah. you know, we shouldn't, we should let people, people automatically think that when you marry someone, the person is yours. You don't own anyone. It's just a contract. You can't control that you, anyone. Yeah, a contract yeah. is like a business contract. You work in this place. Mm. The company doesn't own you. Mm. You render a service to the company. Do you know what I mean? When we begin to look at it in that manner, like you cannot own the person. That way we're less disappointed when they let us down, one. Two, the reason why I would say yes towards being obsessed with who I'm with is I think it helps. If you're, when the bad times come, mm. it must help that even when I don't, particularly I'm not in love with you, I like you. Because I feel like like is greater than love. Yeah, but you know I, what I mean? That's actually why I think that it's very, very important to have a solid, solid friendship. Mm. I think having a solid friendship is more important than having, you, you know, like, I mean, we've all dated, you know, that one person that he comes, you know, comes into the room and we're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, yeah. you know. Butterflies that person, in your tummy. Guess what? That shit freaking wears off. Really? It does. Not, you cannot have that. You cannot have fireworks for like freaking, you know. There are people that tell you that they've had fireworks. But it's, I think it's, years. I think you have to constantly work at it. You have yeah. to constantly work at it. It's like a journey. There are going to be times when those fireworks are not there. Mm. But How those, do you light it to spark? Well, you have to, <laughs> but to be honest, you have to, that, that yeah. friendship is actually very, yeah. very important. Yeah. Because like, like what you, what you just said, mm. um, there are going to be times when, you might not feel like you love the person, but you should still like mm. th like them. Mm. There may be times when maybe they've done something that really disappointed mm. you, but you're just like, you know what, mm. but I still like you as a mm. person. But so, would you ever you know, leave your marriage? Is that You know how people have deal breakers and say, if this happens, I'm gone. I don't think anybody gets married to get divorced. Yeah. I don't think anybody gets married yeah, to get divorced. Yeah, but is that one but, thing that you say, this happens? Um, we, to be honest, we've spoken about it. Um... You know, I had like a long list. Oh my gosh, you do this, you do that, and everything. But um, like violence is something. Yeah, that's, apart from you know, violence, like yeah. Say for instance, if he killed someone, would you stay with him through it? Why did he kill the person? Oh, you gonna bury the body? No, but why did he kill the person? Okay. 
Is it like, you know, that, yeah, I need to ask questions. Why did you kill the person? Yeah, you know, just, just on the Was surface. it like, was if it self defense? Was, was it, you girl, know. If that nigga killed someone, was would he trying you to say... like, I mean, if he was trying to harm one of my kids, I'll be like, okay, I'm going to buy the shovel. What else do we need? Well, if he was, trying, was trying, to harm, trying to harm you, if, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, harm yeah, so you or one of no, my kids, just definitely. Just him, I said, oh my God, he ran someone over and the person died. And would you cover it up or would you be like, let's call the cops? See, this is like a sinister part of me I don't like talking about. Yeah, you better talk um, about it. No, I would. You, you don't need to. <laughs> would you? Like, I'm, just, I'm just trying to know. You know how like, people are like... Because I think about like, what, would, what would he do for me? If I, if no, I came back... No, don't think about what he would do. Just for you, we already agreed in this conversation that we have to think about ourselves sometimes. Yes. So leave your husband as an entity. And for in this, this thing called marriage, is there a deal breaker that you know that if this happens to... I'm never coming back from this. Oh, gosh. I think if this was a few years ago, I'd have, like, some very, very black black and white answers, like, yeah. oh, my gosh, if he did this, if he stepped out, if he was violent, if he did this. But then the older that I'm getting, I'm just realising that, you know what? Okay, give me the entire scenario. Mm. What ex- what actually happened, mm. you know? Do you believe and that then, couples should have therapy even when they're I happy? think every freaking person, <laughs> especially every Nigerian, should have therapy. Okay. I have um, obviously had, you know, therapy. I think it's worked for me. It's, it's, there, there's certain things that you don't realize that you do. So mm. there's certain things. I think a lot of the way we are as adults mm. is down to what we experience as children. Mm. A lot of how we, you know, deal with relationships as adults is down to what we saw as kids. I'm from a polygamous home, so mm. there's certain things that... In my mind, I was like, I wasn't, you know, I was I was away, mm. so I didn't really see a lot of this, but it literally took me how many decades before I was like, wait a second, mm. oh my gosh, I think like this because of what I saw mm. or what I experienced. Mm. Mm. So I think everybody, you know, Mixed should therapy. have therapy. Yeah. But being from a polygamous home, yeah. so it's that must easily permit cheating. I don't Necessary. recommend, but I would... I, okay, you know what? You said deal breaker. Come back to me and say, oh, I think I'm, you know, I want to have another wife. I'd be like, oh, that's fantastic. Okay. You never do it? Or you're never from a home where a there was other wives? And a lot of, I say this as people, a lot of the things about me that I don't like. Yeah. A lot of the things Came about me that, that I'm, okay. yes, yes. Yeah. So I would never, I think, you know, um, a lot of kids from, you know, polygamous homes are very, very damaged. Yeah. Trauma. And it's, you know, it's, yes, and it's a, it's something that we don't talk about yeah. uh, because a lot of the, you know, um, competition that, you know, happens with the wives Siblings or whatever, and, it gets yeah. passed on to the children. I think Oof. it's very, very damaging. So Oof. if you're saying, what would I not, the polygamy never, never in a million, the only way I would do polygamy is if, you know, okay, let's just say, like, I don't know, you're the richest person in the world Elon or whatever. Musk. And I, li- I would, I would <laughs> the still. The is right. But I would I'm not. Like, yeah, I would not be <laughs> in, the same, in the same house. Yeah. I would yeah. probably not even want to be in the same country. Mm. So I'd be like, okay, you there? Yeah. I'm gonna say my mansion and everything, mm. and you know whatever. Mm. <laughs> but thank, nah. you. <laughs> thank you so much for coming. I'm laughing because I heard about Jeff Bezos' wife who is going through a divorce because her husband, her husband spent thirty three million. Thirty three, Akba only. But, but I think she, the kind of like, I, I mean, I don't know them, but maybe she was just like, oh, here's a credit card or something. How does he spend that? <laughs> Even I money. Be <laughs> I How don't does know. he spend that money? I don't know. Ha! Anyway, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for, for having coming. me. This was really fun. It was fun. I feel yeah. like I still have like about five, six questions I want to ask you. But you okay, know, but maybe when you day. maybe invite me on your on your hey, podcast, then your podcast, you will drink a bottle. And I then don't you drink. Just, I, I stopped you, drinking. I I don't know. You sniff glue or something, <laughs> and then we'll just. You're so violent. <laughs> and then glue. I just want I just want everything just like you know laid bare. Yeah. I think that there, there is this. Um, well, you know, also another thing that I'm really grateful for is that, you know, we you and I actually because there was a time that I didn't quite understand what was going on between us. Yes, there was. I don't know. There was, what and... that was, and then later on, we had a, a conversation, mm. and we just moved past it. Cheers yeah, we that. did. We did. We did. I, mean, we did. It's I nice think to have women I think who can just be like, okay. I was very, very um, like back in the day. I kind of felt like, no, you should do this things a certain way. You should do okay. things a certain way. So you judge so, you know, me? I think there was. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm grown now, so you I can were actually judging say, me. I kind of felt like, because again, you know, from the kind of family that I was, and yeah. I think a lot of Nigerian families um, do this where. 
you're like you're supposed to like hide your shame and everything. Yeah. And I was like, this girl wrote a damn book about it. Damn, you're supposed to just you know. So that was like way 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 back then. Yeah. But then. But it's nice that I find that you finally said this to me. I, I didn't know that you were yeah. one of those that. No, but it wasn't. It wasn't that. like it. It wasn't like it, it wasn't oh like gosh, I went. I I sat there and said, yeah. I'm going to do this. It was my way of dealing with certain things, and people are allowed to that's, deal with certain things. That's that's the thing. So mm. I think it wasn't like I was like, oh my gosh, I hate. It. I was yeah. just like, I just I didn't understand it. Yeah. Then I, you know, after going through, you know, like different things, I mean, you know, one of the um, things I've spoken about is losing a baby. And there's some people that were like, why did you talk about it? Why did you talk about it? And I was like, it was it was a healing moment for, for me. I yeah. didn't, it's not like I wanted to, mm -hmm. but the way it happened, it wasn't even something that I could, you know, deal with in private because yeah. <laughs> we went to announce it, oh, we're pregnant, yeah. you know. So yeah. then going through things like that kind of just made me realize that, you know what, who are you to kind of just say, you know, how somebody should mm -hmm. deal with a certain situation? Mm -hmm. I'm at the stage now when I'm like, you know what? If you Whatever want to do that, as long as it's not hurting mm. anybody. And then the fact that you know, you you sharing that healed a lot of people because I know a lot of women also had been dealing with that and yeah. they could they could find solace in oh if this yeah. person who I listened to on the radio went through that mm -hmm. and that's what it was for me too because it wasn't apart from the fact that yeah it was a book that I wrote about my pain and when it, when people are like oh how's man she did and she wrote a book I'm like do you not understand that it was my shame that I also bore in mm. there as well you know people were okay with one side of the story and thinking about how could she put that out there I'm like putting that out there takes courage because yeah, I it, it, oh I gosh, it does. Bore, I brought in the book that I didn't cook for my do you know how Nigerian people were like, oh this is why he left you you know it was a lot for me to to unburden but that was one I heard from the spirit and I knew that that was the direction to go mm. secondly I also felt like if one person can read this and mm. make a change and I think the biggest thing that happened to me before we wrap up is one man actually reached out to me and over the years, I've always referred back to that. And he said to me, reading your book made me realize what an ass, I mean, we can swear, what an asshole I, I was to my 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 person. Mm. And I could see myself in this and mm. I, I don't want this to be my, my final yeah. destination. So thank you because mm. this has made me wake up as a man and I will do better. And mm. I said to him, don't just take accountability. Go to that woman and let her know Mm. that this is the journey you've been on and you're willing, you know, and it's like, oh, what if she leaves me? I'm just like, look, mm. have the chance. When you're being honest, you get so much done Yeah. in terms of, you know, you trying to sweep it under the carpet. And, you know, a couple of years after, they sent me a picture of themselves in Maldives. Oh. And that was just the full circle moment for me that, okay, I went through a divorce. Yeah. They could salvage their marriage. My work here is done. Aww. But thank you so much for doing this. Thank like, you, thank you, was, thank I you. I knew there was, this was going to be deep. I just didn't think it was going to be as deep as it got. It was, I'm, I mean, you know, so we could have cried. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, but yeah. All right. So I guess, guys, that's it on today's episode. Uh, I mean, do I even need to sign out? This has been still soaking in it. I've had so many aha moments and so many things I'm taking away, which I, I did share with you guys, never losing who you are to any situation, marriage, education, whatever it is mm. that you're doing. And I will chat with you guys on the next episode of Talking Moments. Mm.